So let's solve this problem. Air enters a turbojet engine, so it's simply just a jet engine. No fan, no prop, no special, just a jet engine. At 26 kilopascal, what can you say about that pressure? High, low? Yeah, it's flying at high altitude. So it's where the atmospheric pressure is low. And that temperature, it's cold up at high altitude. So you have high altitude, you know, cruising conditions. And it has an inlet velocity of 220 meters per second. So you could view the craft, aircraft engine going through stagnant air, and the speed of the aircraft is 220 meters per second. That's how you change the reference system and now air appears to be approaching the, st the stationary engine at that speed. The air mass is uh, 25 kilograms per second ingested and through the whole thing. Air is uh, slowed in the diffuser section. The pressure ratio across the compressor is 11. There's negligible pressure drop through the combustor. The turbine inlet is given to be a 1400 Kelvin temperature. Isentropic efficiency of the compressor is 85, and of the turbine, it's 90%. The work developed by the turbine equals the compressor work input. That's an obvious statement, but it's nice to get it repeated. The diffuser and the nozzle are isentropic flow through them, so that we know how to handle that. The operation steady state, I wouldn't know what to do with a tr fully transient problem. It'd be much more complex. Kinetic energy is negligible except for the inlet and exit of the engine. We just mentioned that before. So the speed is negligible. The kinetic energy is negligible except for the inlet and outlet. Perform an air standard analysis, getting rid of the combustion process. Forget about the added, added mass of the fuel, and you just have just air, pure air going through the system. Uh, accounting for variable specific heats, meaning use the air table. Use the air table for all this and determine the velocity at the nozzle exit. So that would be V5. And then what is the thrust developed by the engine? The forward thrust is that mass flow rate, which was given in the problem, 25 kilograms per second times. The velocity at 5 minus the velocity on the inlet, which is VA, which was given to be 220. So you make a sketch. So we have the diffuser, we have the compressor, we have the burner, we have the turbine, we have the nozzle, and it just goes right on through and you introduce states in between. Just to be consistent with our textbook, this is state A. If I had my choice, I'd probably renumber it, but let's just stay with the textbook. This is state one, state two, state three, state four, state five. Once you have these, you can uh, probably a good thing to do is put a diagram together, a temperature entropy diagram. One pressure is going to be that low pressure of 26 kilopascal, and I'm just going to sketch it like this. There's 26 kilopascal. When you come into the diffuser, the pressure at one, Think about the pressure at one. I don't need a calculation of a number, but is it going to be higher than 26, equal to 26, or less than 26? It's going to be higher pressure. That's what the diffuser does. It slows it down, and there's a pressure regain. Okay, so the temperature is going to go up as well, and so if it's isentropic, and so there's a slightly higher pressure isobar, I'm not going to show it very long, it's just a slightly higher pressure, maybe 35, 40 kilopascal. And so there's from state 1, no, state A to state 1 on a temperature entropy diagram. So T1 is a little higher than TA. Then you put it through the compressor. Well, you're going to put it up to a very high pressure, which is going to be the burner pressure, right? So maybe we show it up here. Now, if it was isentropic, wouldn't that be where state 2 is? But we had an isentropic efficiency of the compressor, which is 85%. So where is 2 actual compared to 2S? Right there. That's state 2 actual. Now we're going to heat it up, and it's going to go way up here to a high temperature at state 3, 
The temperature at 3 is the outlet temperature, which was given to be 1400 Kelvin in the problem statement. And this is where a lot of students may mess up. They think that it goes through the turbine all the way down to 26. It doesn't go all the way down, does it? How far does it go? You have to calculate it. It's not given anywhere in a problem statement. It's hard to calculate it, but we'll calculate it. But it's going to come down only enough such that it generates the right amount of work to feed the compressor. Okay. So I'm going to just show it here. I'm trying to not line those two intermediate pressures up. They're different pressures. Okay, so this is going to be state 4S, but we had an isentropic efficiency. So there is 4 actual. Now from 4 to 5 through the nozzle. Is it isentropic? Yeah, and so it's straight down to state 5. I think that'll really help you if you get your TS diagram. So what we do is we start working on marching through this system to make calculations. All right, let's go ahead and start. So uh, maybe we want to, I want you to put together a property table, but I'm going to have to scroll to other pages. So put your property table instead of, oh, can you scoot back, you know, go, go back in the slide. So the property table will be something like this. So we'll have different states, state A, then 1, then et cetera. And then we're going to talk about the pressure in kilopascal, the temperature in Kelvin. And we could talk about the enthalpy in kilojoules per kilogram. So let's start figuring out some of these things. It was 26 kilopascal and 230 Kelvin. Can you tell me what the H is, the enthalpy, using the air table? Yeah, we go to the air table, and it comes in to be 230.02 or close enough. Now, I'm going to do an isentropic from A to 1. What am I? It's good to the if I do a conservation of energy, there's two equations. I, I'm going to use the P1 over PA is equal to PR1 over PRA. What is that equation from? Isentropic flow in that uh, in the uh, diffuser. And then we have a conservation of energy that says inlet enthalpy plus the inlet kinetic energy, that's at A, is equal to the kinetic energy at the exit of the diffuser, kinetic energy at 1. All right. <laughs> We, can, we already get this one, that's 230.02, plus the kinetic energy of the inlet air. Isn't that one-half V, the velocity? The inlet velocity was uh, 220 meters per second. You square it. And then... You want to get the right units because this was kilojoules per kilogram. And so 1,000 meters squared per second squared is exactly one kilojoule per kilogram. That's a unit conversion. Then you can calculate the enthalpy. At state 1, it comes in at 254.22. So there you go, 254.22. If you want to, you can now calculate the temperature. How would you calculate the temperature at state 1? Air tables. Uh, maybe I should have made a sketch of that air table. So table A22 has temperature, enthalpy. It has U, but don't worry about U. And has P sub R and it also has V sub R. Don't worry about V sub R. We're just going to be using the T, the H, and the P of R. So we came down here and we said, oh, we're at 230. Let's read off HA. Then we found out that, oh, H1 is 254.22. You can now read off T1. See that? Right. You could also read off. PRA as well as PR1. Why? 
because it was isentropic between the two, and we really want to know the pressure at one. And so the pressure at one is equal to the pressure at A times PR1 over PR is uh, A. That's a PRA. So I needed that PR column as well. Okay. So let me see if I have some numbers here. Uh, this is 0.5477. Then it goes to 0.7776. How did we get that 0.7776? Knowing the enthalpy at 1. And then we calculate the pressure is uh, 36.9 using this equation. So easy to get lost. Is this helpful or not? Helpful? All right, I'll continue on. So now we have state one, we put it through the compressor. We're going to go to state 2s and then state 2 actual. The pressure ratio across the compressor is 11, so it's 406.0 exit pressure, and that's the same exit pressure at state 2 and 2s. Okay. Uh, I didn't fill in our temperature. It's really not all that needed right here. But uh, what do we do is, is uh, we, we look at this, multiply this by 11, because that's PR at state 1. You get PR at state 2S, which is 8.5535. Boy, that's bad looking numbers. 8.5535. Now that I know PR, I could come across and get H as well as temperature if I wanted to. So this is, uh, the H is 505.39. You spend a lot of time interpolating, don't you? Okay. Now I know what would be the minimum work, the work minimum in that compressor is gonna be the 505.39 minus 250. Ah minus 254.22. So you, cal you, you calculate the minimum work, but because of the isotropic efficiency of 85%, the actual work is higher, and the actual enthalpy exiting is 549.71. No. Because uh, the PRs are temperature dependent, and enthalpy dependent, think of that table right here, temperature, enthalpy, and the PRs change with it. All right. You don't really need the PR at state 2. That's not needed. PR at 2 is just not needed. You needed PR at state 2S, which was calculated by 11 times PR at state 1. Now that was good. Now we jump to state three. It's still 406 kilopascal, and the temperature is a whopping 1400. So now we can read off our enthalpy at state three. It's 1515.4, and our PR 450.50. Now this is where it gets a little dicey because I'm going to go to 4S and 4 actual. Don't go to 4S first, go all the way to 4 actual. Why? Because the actual work that the needed to run the compressor is known, that's what the actual work out of the turbine must be. In other words, you have H um, 2S, not 2S, H2 actual minus H1 is equal to H 3 minus H4 actual. The only unknown in that equation is 4 actual. So we jump all the way down here and we can calculate what is the enthalpy at state 4 actual. It comes in at 1219.93. Now what I could do is I can um, uh, come across here uh, well, do this. If that's what the actual is, then I can use the efficiency 
of the turbine. The work of the turbine actual is equal to 1 over the isotropic efficiency of the turbine, the work to turbine isentropic. So I'm going to calculate this H4S. How do we do that again? Okay, well, this is going to be H3 minus H4 actual. If I just go ahead and multiply by the thermal efficiency of the turbine, that's going to be H3 minus H4S. <sighs> Oops, I made a mistake, didn't I? How many people see that mistake? Too many. It's, it's isotropic efficiency of the turbine times the isotropic work. That was my mistake. So this becomes 1 over the efficiency of the turbine. So we could calculate H4S. When we calculate H4S, it comes in at 1, 1, 8, 7, uh, 1, 1, 8, 7.1. Then we have the pressure, the piece of R, because it is 181.32. And I need that piece of R and this piece of R to actually t find out what the pressure at state 4S is. How would I calculate the pressure at state 4S knowing these piece of R's? So, yeah, P4 divided by P3 is equal to PR4 divided by PR3, known or calculated, calculated, uh, known. And we can calculate P4. This comes in at 163.4 kilopascal. I need to erase a little bit right in here. Just erase all that. Does that make sense why it's 163.4? What is the pressure right here? Same. But we really need this piece of R at 4A so that we can continue the isentropic expansion down to exit at 5. So this one is 200.56. Now down to state 5. It's isentropic. We know this exit pressure is 26. We know the ratio of pressures. Hence, we get the new PR at 5, 31.908. Knowing that, I could get the enthalpy, 734.08. I'd hate to do a line diagram. Okay, calculate this, then calculate that, then come over here and calculate it, because you're really jumping between H's, PR's, and then the pressures. I'm sorry? This is 4S, and that's 4 actual. Uh, for, uh, this is... Uh, Right over here? Yeah. Uh, yes, you're absolutely right. P4S, which is the same as P4 actual. Yeah, you're right. Calculate P4S first, then deduce that P4 actual is the same. You're right. All right. All right. Well, once I know this enthalpy, I go back to the first law for that nozzle. So the first law of the nozzle is H4 coming in plus the kinetic energy at state 4 coming in, which is negligible, is equal to the enthalpy at 5 going out, plus the appreciable kinetic energy at 5 coming out. We just calculated the two H's. That gives us the kinetic energy at 5. And so we get the kinetic energy at 5 is a whopping 485.8 kilojoules per kilogram which we then can calculate the velocity at 5, making use of our unit conversion again. It's 985.7 meters per second.
Okay, what I'm going to do is go to another slide with the answers written out in Excel. All right. So uh, let me try and get, orient you. Each of the states, starting with that uniquely numbered state A, <laughs> and then we have our pressures, our temperatures. Most of these are not needed because we're using the enthalpies. All right, we also have piece of R's. Because the inlet velocity and its inlet kinetic energy are needed, I add two columns and then we'll use them again at the exit. All right, ignore this for a minute. So we had our efficiencies. We just calculated uh, all of the uh, H's and PR's as we've shown. So we calculate this exit velocity at 900 and 86 meters per second. And then what is the thrust? It's the mass flow rate, which is 25 kilograms per second, times the exit velocity at 5, minus the inlet velocity at A, and it calculates to 19,144. All right, what is the extra column here? Well, what is the K, the ratio of specific heats, of air at 230? Oh, it's around 1.401. All right. You can actually get the speed of sound in air at that temperature of 230 with that K, 1.401. The equation is the square root of C. No, I'm sorry. C, the speed of sound in air is square root of KRT. So this is the K, this is the R for the air, R bar divided by the molar mass, and then this is the absolute temperature in Kelvin. So there it is, there's the speed of sound at 220 Kelvin. I could calculate then the Mach number of that engine. You know, it's like the aircraft is cruising at 0.72 Mach at that altitude. All right, you can then take a look at the speed at which the gases are coming out, calculate the speed of sound at the temperature that the gases are coming out, and note that the Mach number for the gases coming out are 1.86. What do we know about the speed at which they're coming out the back of that engine? They're not subsonic anymore supersonic speed of the gases coming out. The aircraft may not be going that fast, but the gases are. They're going to be shock waves. <laughs> All right? Yeah. So we're going to get to that in a second. So did I cover this problem sufficiently? You want to test yourself? Uh, redo the problem with constant specific heat. Completely stay out of table A22. And you can do it, and here they are. It's a lot simpler, actually, but it's a, maybe the conceptually a little more challenging. And uh, you won't get the exact numbers because you're using a constant specific heat. And that constant specific heat, you know, temperature dependent, and we have a large temperature variation of our gases through the system. But there you go, redone. This is a problem recalculated. <laughs>